day. My name is Chris Reid. I'm the CEO of Knee Metals, ASX listed project developer based in Perth, Western Australia. We develop projects in minerals and materials for a sustainable future, a real focus on commodities in the supply chain for electric vehicles and stationary energy storage. Today, I'm going to talk about the Mount Edwards nickel project and Near Metal's decision to demerge that into a separate entity. Fantastic, Chris. Good to have you back on the show. Um, you're right, we're going to focus on uh, Widgee Nickel Project. Mount Edwards uh, saw the press release. Um, how's that been received? Yeah, it looked very well. You know, it's, it's the most upstream uh, of our projects. You know, there's uh, 162,000 tonnes of nickel in an 11 nickel sulphide deposits. 50 kilometres from BHP's nickel processing infrastructure that, that is currently on care and maintenance, but will be coming back into operation next year. Right, okay. I mean, you, you mentioned BHP, obviously, next door. You're not spinning this out or demerging it to just sell it to BHP, are you? Uh, absolutely not. So what New Metals has done is we acquired the project in 2018, uh, uh, you know, our all-in cost to the project to this stage is about $13 million. Uh, we've got 11 jork compliant resources. And, you know, where where the project is at now, you know, they're, they're all sitting. Four of them have been historically mined. They're on granted mining leases, like I said, adjacent to fantastic first-class infrastructure in the eastern goldfields of Western Australia, which is, you know, Australia's nickel mining hub, more or less. And so, you know, Widgie Nickel, which is the, the name of the demerged entity that will house the Mount Edwards project, uh, is a nickel development story. Um, you know, those, those leases have produced 31,000 tonnes of, of nickel between 1980 and 2008. They were in private hands for more than 10 years until we acquired them, reinvested them. We've assembled a fantastic management team uh, and over the next two years, they will, you know, take those projects to to being ready for an investment decision. Okay, well, let's talk about the team in a second, but maybe just remind us the structure that is being proposed and what it means for Neo Metals shareholders, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So what we've done is we've put all of the Mount Edwards projects into a public company uh, called Widgie Nickel Limited. And so subject to our... Uh, extraordinary general meeting, the near metal shareholders, if they approve it, will receive one free share in Widgie Nickel, which will have a, a, a listing price uh, of 20 cents for every 4.218 near metal shares that they have. Uh, and it's via, and they'll, they'll get that via capital reduction. So we expect to get um, relief from the uh, demerger relief and that will what it'll do is it'll reduce the carrying value of your near metal shares and it will uh, not be taxed as a dividend subject obviously to um, the ATO approvals 4.218 how'd you, how'd you get yeah. there <laughs> so look you know we've got uh, it's got pre-money uh, of 26 million dollars value for the near metal shareholders and you divide that by 26, uh, sorry, by 20 cents per 20, you know, so you times that by five and you've got to divide that by the number of near metal shares on issue. So that's the, that's the ratio that it's come out at. And so not only will you get a free share in Widgie Multha on the basis you, your shareholders and all the near metal shareholders become a shareholder of Widgie Nickel, they'll be afforded the opportunity, exclusive opportunity, to subscribe for new shares uh, at that 20 cent issue price. And they'll be able to subscribe for one new share for every 0.923 that they have. Look, it's, uh, that's what happens when the spreadsheets get hold of things. But essentially, you know, the near metals shareholders will get $26 million worth of notional value back and the opportunity to subscribe for $24 million in new equity at 20 cents. So the company will have at 20 cents a nominal market cap of $50 million uh, or a pre-money IPO 
a pre-money EV of $26 million, which is fantastically cheap. I mean, the replacement value of the drill database alone it exceeds $300 million. Um, you know, it's a it's 240 square kilometres of, of, of granted leases. Um, you know, it's... Uh, um, we're very confident that it'll be very, very well received. It's very, very attractively priced on a peer metric basis. Okay, I, I do want to talk about what you're going to be able to do with 24 million bucks or, or so, whatever the number number ends up being. But let's talk. Let's talk about the team. So, where are they from? Who's full time? Who's doing what? What are they tasked with doing? Yeah. So the managing director and CEO is Steve Norgard. Steve is a very, very well credentialed mining engineer. He was previously the chief operating officer of West Gold. Uh, you know, and they operate. Oh, they must have ten open pit and underground operations uh, running. So he is a real mine builder. In fact, uh, he actually oper operated it. Mount Edwards uh, 26 North deposit in uh, in 1990. So he's uh, he's a, just a tad older than I am, but uh, you know an absolute wealth of experience in in developing open pit and underground mines in gold and nickel. Who else have we got? And so the company secretary CFO is Graham Scott, who was previously company secretary CFO of Peak Resources, which uh, which is an Australian. Uh, an ASX listed uh, developer, rare earth project developer. Right. So those those are the two full time guys. Here. And so they're the full time guys, and then the rest of the board. We've got uh, Andrew Parker, who's uh, a lawyer, non practicing investment banker, as the chairman. Uh, we've got Felicity Repicoli Muir, who is a very well credentialed geologist to make sure that the uh, the money that's going into the ground in drill holes are, you know, getting the best bang for buck. And we've got Scott Perry, who uh, is a process engineer, spent 10 years at BHP Nickel West uh, in the uh, processing and marketing side of the business. So, you know, we've got, you know, geology, metallurgy, marketing, mining, engineering and finance slash legal background on the board. So, you okay. Know, you use the phrase, proud to assemble them. you use the phrase so, independent, highly skilled boards. So the independent bit yep. always intrigues me. How much of this company will Neo Metals continue to own? Uh, and how much we're actually distributing do they 100%. have? So we're, we're, we're uh, distributing 100% of our assets to our shareholders, the nickel assets. Um, Neo Metals has indicated that it will participate in the sub underwriting of the entitlements issue. Um, and that the entitlements issue is proposed to be uh, underwritten. So when you hire a team like that, they've got to deliver, they've got to create value, you've got to create wealth, right? You, 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 you're not too bad at doing that. How easy is it going to be for you to sort of sit back and watch them get on with it independently? Look, one thing, one thing that we're really, really confident is that, you know, the, the peer metrics. So when you have a look at these upstream mineral projects, and advanced ones like this that have got, you, you don't have the hurdle of having to build your own processing infrastructure. You'll essentially be working out how much it costs to dig up the ore and how much you effectively sell the ore if you go down the, the BHP uh, ore treatment and concentrate purchasing uh, route, which is what has been utilised to date. Um, and so, you know, the, I, I guess... The nickel companies, you get valued on enterprise value per tonne of nickel resource, and you've got a bandwidth and an average. And within that, you've got different quality of resources, inferred, indicated, measured. And as you increase in confidence, the value of those resources per tonne goes up. So, you know, at, at Mount Edwards, two-thirds of the 10 million tonne resource is in inferred. So as you infill that and extend it, make it bigger, uh, you're going to get a higher value per tonne of nickel resource. And for four or five of those that we've done preliminary mining evaluations, when they become indicated, they can then get assessed to become reserves. And then so you get a step change in the EV per tonne of resource, of reserve, I should say. 
And so you'll have your resource and you'll get paid more for the reserve. So your EV creeps up. And there's as they're permitted and financed and put into operation, you get uh, an EV per tonne, per production tonne of nickel. So what we've got is you've got a massive base, 162,000 nickel metal tonnes, and it's going to become more valuable as you increase the confidence, prove that you can mine it economically and get them into production. I mean, there's just a fantastic line of sight. We've, we, I mean, we're super confident uh, in where the nickel price is going over this decade. And it's really hard not to be because they're not easy to get into production. There's not massive amounts of them all over the world. There's some massive mines, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, you're finding, you know, less than 10% of nickel going into to, to that battery end supply chain. I mean, you've got the traditional applications for it. But all of a sudden, if we look at what's required in 2030, it would consume the entire nickel industry. Okay, so where do you find new resources to supply the 90% that's sucking up the nickel production at the moment? Because it'll go to one or the other. It, it, and if you're sell, selling, selling stainless steel fridges, stainless steel, using the nickel for stainless steel to sell it for a fridge, as opposed to nickel that goes into nickel sulfate that goes into batteries, right? Um, if, there's a, if there's price competition, the stainless guys can't pay as much for nickel as the battery guys can, right? So we're very, very confident where the nickel price will head. We're probably more bullish on the back half, the, the, the back half of this decade and so Mount Edward's going to take, you know, a couple of years to have all of those deposits put through the evaluation mill, which is, you know, as project developers, that's what we do. We identify the commodities, the projects, we invest, we take them through, scoping, pre-feasibility, DFS, you know, into production. And we've done that a number of times. But this needs a team dedicated to that because, you know, Near Metals, obviously, we, we are commercialising very soon our lithium battery process. We've got the demonstration plant being commissioned at Hilkenbach in Germany. We've got a number of um, BD opportunities that are, that are in the public and then more that are, in, uh, that are confidential. And so, you know, then we've got the vanadium recovery project. We've just finished the pilot. And so we will soon start the final feasibility stage for that. Uh, Barambi, it's, it's, you know, we've been, we're doing the trial mining uh, and we're doing sort of demonstration scale concentration soon. And, you know, that has ministerial approval to construct the concentrator and a grant of mining proposal. So they're all more advanced. Mount Edwards is, is it's, it's been demerged because it needs, it's getting hidden behind that. We're not getting the value for our shareholders keeping it in near metals. It's a fantastic asset. We've got a fantastic team. It'll have the money to get, I mean, it's had four mines operating on it before. Uh, there's an additional seven. There's still resources at those four mines. There's seven other deposits that haven't been developed yet. Uh, it's been a successful mining area. Again, it's played second fiddle to Cambelda. That's fine. We know where the nickel price is likely to head. I'm absolutely convinced that Mount, that Mount Edwards project will be active nickel miners in the future. Thanks for all of that. The point I was trying to get to was you're saying you guys, Near Metals, have already done a lot of the planning in terms of the, the way that this thing needs to, this, sorry, the process that this needs to go through to get to a point where it can get into production and you're handing it over to a team which you've brought in. Because the the, the element that um, I think some of the questions have been sent in is like, well, is Chris going to sit on the board? Is Chris going to be involved? And I think what I just heard from you was we've got a lot of other projects which we need to, which are nearing the point of where FID decisions need to be made, and you want to focus on those. This is a little bit further down the curve, as it were, but this is a team that you've picked and you're confident in their ability to deliver. They don't, you don't need to be well, sitting on the board. You know, the board of management, the largest shareholders in Near Metals, they'll get, they'll be the largest shareholders, you know, uh, subject to taking up entitlement issues as a group in, in, in Widgie Nickel, right? All the same shareholders uh, that we hold very dear and we'll all be shareholders in Widgie Nickel. I mean, we are there to, to be big brother. We will be participating in the, in the sub-underwriting uh, we intend to 
be part of this. That's a financial. That's a financial time. commitment. I'm talking about time. In terms of time, mm. uh, mate. I mean, I'm not a nickel miner. I'm not a geologist. Uh, I'm not a metallurgist. Uh, I'm not a mining engineer. I mean, I, I have done little. You know, look in my post grad, we you, you do subjects on them, so I know enough to be dangerous. But you know, I'm not a first class my manager that that you know we've what we've done is from our long involvement in lithium the lithium battery industry we identified what are the commodities how to get in there the battery recycling originally for cobalt then they're becoming more nickel rich and so apart from lithium that we're absolutely convinced because it's the only non-substitutable part of a lithium ion battery the other trends immutable trends were less cobalt more nickel and so we went out and actively, you know, procured this from a private group. Part we got from a public, part we got private, and we've kept it there. We know what the inherent value is, and we've invested in that whole project over a couple of years, 13 million bucks, and it's, it's irreplaceable. I don't know how long it would take you to get it. There, there are not these opportunities uh, in Australia. I get it. But if you look at Matt Marion, what you did there, you made, you made a lot of money off of that, but you, you didn't get it into production. This is not a cookie cutter. No, we did get it into production. Did, but did you do that? You got it into production well, as we new metal. shareholders, yeah. Well, we did it with, no, well, we did it with our partners. That's what I mean. Gan Feng and, That's what I and mean. Min Reds. Right. So there's not a cookie cutter approach here. You're going to get this into production. Your new team, the wedgie, uh, nickel team are going to get this into production yourselves. Absolutely. That, right. That's how you get the greatest return. Right. I mean, okay. you, you've got 162,000 tons of nickel. So you've got a couple of, you know, what is it, three, somewhere between three and four billion dollars worth Aussie of nickel in the ground. Right. So what's the and process? it's going to have an EV. It's going to have an EV at 26 million. How do you achieve a massive multiple up uplift? You get it into production. And so we bought this project when the nickel price was twelve and a half thousand bucks. And the nickel price is nineteen and a half thousand bucks. And in the nickel price, I mean, the the best way to play the nickel, I mean, we could have used our very hefty balance sheet and gone out and bought nickel futures, or you know, bought LME Physical and borrowed money. But you know, we we acquired it at the low price at at a, at a, at a low price in the a low nickel price and invested in it and we've ridden that value up we're just saying to the shareholders this this needs a dedicated nickel team it needs a dedicated pool of money and the value the look through value on this is much better because i've got other projects of different scales that need different amounts of money ahead of it in our pipeline in near metals so, you know, this is this, this is that, you know, ready to go into a, a, essentially what is like a, a two-year pre-fees, right? You've got 11 deposits, but the first four or five, the most attractive yes. ones go through Okay, first. brilliant, brilliant. That's, that's right? what I'm getting at. Is, but, is how do, how do, what, are people, Barambi, what are people you know, buying in into? investment Chris. decisions, I've got battery recycling, Barambi, and the Vanadium Recovery Project all coming up to FIDs in 2022. Right, we're going to get a little bit busy. I understand that, but I, I just want to be really clear with people and say, I, I get that you're saying it, this is a great opportunity and it needs its own dedicated team and it's time uh, to breathe. It's a two-year pre-fees process and that's the bit I wanted to talk to you about, which is, right. So, so what does that actually mean? You've got 24 million bucks, you're going to do a bunch of infill because you've got to bring more of this uh, in, inferred it's into indicated. indicated, right? Yeah. Great, smart. Um, but I mean, what some else is would happening? Say what else is happening with that yeah. 24 so, I mean, million look, bucks? If we, if we look at that, and that, that, that has to happen. To, if, you, if you work out what I've got to do to get this into production, it's got to get permitted, it's got to get financed, it probably needs to be a reserve to get financed, and to get it to become a reserve, it's got to be at least indicated, right? So I've got to get the inferred indicated, infill drilling. People go, oh, you know, that's boring. Now, wait a second. This is the beautiful part about it. What we've worked out is that less than 10% of the entire assay database has ever been assayed for PGMs. And we know they exist. We know there's a positive correlation. The higher the sulfur content, the higher nickel content, the higher the PGMs. So in the limited amount of diamond drilling core that we still that, that we've done, because we've done a limited amount of diamond drilling, most of it's been RC drilling, right? So 
in testing a number of deposits, what we've been able to work out is that PGMs are there and that they report to the concentrate, right? They're part of the ore body. But Western Mining, out of the 130 odd thousand of the 140 that they took, right? Do you know how many samples that they had submitted for PGMs? Zero. A hundred. <laughs> it was someone's curiosity research project probably 30 years ago. Right. Right? But they existed. They never used to pay anyone for them, but they definitely exist. So, you know, what you've, what you've, what you've got there is you're going to be doing the infill and extension, and all these deposits are open at depth. Our average, our, our deepest mine's about 500. Our other, the other mine's owned by uh, Mincor along Strike to the south have all been mined down. I think the deepest one's well over a kilometre. So our, we're open at depth, open along Strike, so infill and extension. About half the budget goes to those evaluation activities, right? So if you say you're doing a 24 million raise, about 12 million, about 8 million goes into the infill and extension drilling. But you, not only are you going to get increased confidence from inferred to indicated for your nickel, but you're also going to be able to get the assays and the volumes of metal for cobalt, copper, palladium, platinum, and gold, because they all exist in the ore body and they all get recovered to the concentrate um, in the work that we've done to date, right? It's not all of them, but in the three that we've done, they report to the concentrate and, and that's fantastic for us. And, and they'll make a difference to the yeah. economics, but we need to work out how much is there. So you're going to have – so the, the two years to, to get through to essentially, you know, pre-fees or decision on a couple of the more attractive ones that have lower CapEx startups, bearing in mind you don't have to build your own processing infrastructure. That's, that's um, interesting. You have a fantastic news flow. So, you know, new resources, new commodities with other than nickel having uh, measurements around them. Then you're going to, you know, run your, your mining studies. They'll potentially become reserves. Then you will be doing the, uh, so, you know, to do that, you've obviously got to do the metallurgy for the other deposits. But bearing in mind that you've got four historic mines that have produced over 1.1 million tonnes of ore at a, at a head grade of 2.62 that were processed at the same mill that you want to process at, right? So the, so the metallurgy. You know, so I was going to, I was going to talk about that. But I, 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 I'm totally, I'm totally nonplussed about, you know, the, the risks around the metallurgy. Okay. So, you know, but you establish, you've got to tick those boxes, right? And you've got to start your permitting. And, and so we've got one deposit there, Armstrong's on care and maintenance. So that, that's, that's already got an approved underground design. It just needs a bit of remediation. Uh, the 26 North deposit, it's got a shaft, you take the collar off, you start dewatering it, you bog out the dirt that you put at the start the start of the decline and then, you you know, the decline's intact. Uh, then you've got some other deposits down at sort of Widgee 3, Gillet, Widgee Town site that you, we think you can access off of a common decline. And so, you know, this thing's got a beautiful journey ahead of it and so, as we know, and then people say, you know, Near metals, yeah, you achieved a lot this year. Well, we, we had a big budget. You, you spend money, you got smart people, uh, and you spend it wisely. You, you generally get a good news flow. Well, I've been intrigued, I'm intrigued um, for you to come back on with with Steve and maybe tell that production story. How does this thing get into oh, production? Absolutely, I don't, and, I don't. and it's best in pictures. Yeah, you know, having a look at old head frames and open pits, and you just you get such a a sense of it and the fly throughs, and it, it, it all becomes much you know when you can do a fly through in 3d and just narrate it and it's visual it's 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 so much better than uh you know one bloke in london one bloke in perth you know shooting the breeze i'm, I'm not sure that you and i are selling too much to the investing public um although you are smarter dressed than i you know i'm, I'm better be i'm better looking wooden. i'm better looking um <clears throat> just yeah, saying probably less modest I, I, I've won prizes for my modesty, actually. I didn't want to tell you that, but I'm going to. Um, right, <laughs> Chris, look, thanks for giving us the heads up on this. Good luck with the extraordinary uh, general meeting that you're going to have. What's, yeah, the, what's, so the, that, what's the timing that, on that? Uh, the timing of the meeting is the 18th of August. Okay. And so, you know, what you'll, what you'll then do is get, you'll get your free shares 
on the 20, I think you get your yeah, in-species distribution, 26th of August, uh, we'll open, I mean, these are all indicative timetables, uh, open the entitlement offer 30 August, close the offer 8th of September, and that'll enable us to um, any shortfall place that to the sub-underwriters and uh, expect commencement of trading of uh, Widgie Nickel shares on the Australian Stock Exchange 22nd of September. Good timing, a good time of year for that one. Well, of course, that's consistent with, you know, returning value back to the shareholders. You know, we've, we've given them back sort of 60 million in cash and, and buybacks, and this will be another $26 million, you know, capital efficient return. And any uh, any plans for Barambi big to be spun out, asking for a friend? Couldn't possibly, couldn't possibly comment on that. <laughs> Chris, appreciate your time today. Uh, go have yourself a good evening and we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, no worries. Keep safe.